Hey, it's Sam from Sugar Spun Run, and today I'll be showing you how to make chocolate zucchini cake. This cake sparked a huge debate in my family over whether a zucchini baked good should taste like zucchini or not. While I really, really wanna know your thoughts on this, my argument is that a zucchini cake should not taste like zucchini. That's kind of the point. You wanna bury some hidden veggies in there. You want to use up that garden produce because you probably have it coming out of your ears by now. And it works great in baked goods because it adds a ton of moisture to the cake in this instance. I do wanna hear your stance and I cannot wait for you to try this recipe at home. I think you're going to love it. Now, before we begin, let's get our oven preheating to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's also talk about our zucchini. You're going to need one and a half cups of shredded zucchini for this recipe. I like to shred the zucchini in my food processor. I'll use the shred blade. So after I've shredded it that way, I will take my regular blade and I am just going to pulse this like two or three times very, very briefly because you don't wanna overdo it or it will be watery until we have zucchini that looks just like this. Once you have shredded and measured or weighed your zucchini, then we are going to blot it, which just means we're going to get out the extra moisture. And I just do this by turning it out onto some paper towels and then soaking up as much extra moisture as I can. Probably going to need a few paper towels to do this. Now it's not about getting every bit of moisture possible out of the zucchini, it's just about getting the excess stuff out. So I'm pretty happy with this. We'll set this aside and we'll start making our cake batter. Now for the cake part, we are going to start with two cups of all-purpose flour. We'll add one cup of granulated sugar and we're also going to add one cup of firmly packed light brown sugar, which adds a nice depth of flavor to the cake. We'll also add one and a half teaspoons of baking soda and a half teaspoon of table salt. And we will whisk everything together here until it's well combined. All right, once this is nicely whisked together, we'll set it aside. And the next thing you're going to need is one half cup of very, very hot water. It should be steaming hot, it could be boiling hot. You're going to get that out and you're going to immediately add one half cup of cocoa powder. Try not to splash. And we are going to whisk this right in until it is completely dissolved into the water. Now this is a trick I took from my chocolate muffins that I shared not too long ago. What this does is this is going to bloom the cocoa powder for us and give us a super rich chocolate flavor. You could also add a pinch of instant coffee or espresso here if you'd like to really, really deepen that flavor. All right, now in another mixing bowl, you are going to want to melt 10 tablespoons of unsalted butter, which you can see I already have melted, at least mostly. We're going to mix it just a little bit and we will add our chocolate mixture right in with the butter. Just going to stir these gently to get everything combined. These ingredients are naturally going to want to separate a little bit, but I like it to be pretty well combined. So I'm just going to whisk everything. Then we'll add our sour cream. You'll need one cup of sour cream. Alternatively, you could use one cup of full fat plain Greek yogurt. We'll stir this in. I like to add the sour cream before we add the eggs because just if anything is still too warm, the sour cream is going to cool it down so that when we add our eggs, it's not going to cook them. All right, now let's add our eggs. You're going to need two large eggs for this recipe. Now, ideally these should be room temperature. One and two. We'll also add two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Get everything nicely combined. Break up those egg yolks. Okay, let's bring back our dry ingredients and we are going to just add these right to the wet ingredients. Get everything at once and use a spatula now, don't use your whisk, and we're going to fold everything together until it is about 50% combined. You do not want to use an electric mixer for this step because you do run the risk of accidentally over mixing your batter, which could make your cake dense and dry. If you ever run into a cake that is rubbery or dense or dry, most likely that's because it was overmixed or the flour was accidentally overmeasured or it was overbaked, even if it was only an extra minute or two in the oven. Once we're about 50% or so combined, we'll grab our zucchini and this is one and a half cups of shredded zucchini that's been blotted. 
And now we'll fold this in until all of the wet and dry ingredients are evenly incorporated and the zucchini is well distributed through the cake. All right, we're going to be baking this cake in a 13 by nine baking pan. I am using a metal baking pan. If you opt for a glass one, just keep in mind, it's going to need to bake for a little bit longer than the time I'm about to give you. We'll spread this evenly into the pan. And this just smells so amazing and chocolatey already. And we will take this over to the center rack of our 350 degree Fahrenheit oven where it's going to need to bake for about 35 minutes. Always check that it's done by inserting a toothpick into the center of the cake. It should come out clean or with a few moist crumbs. Once the cake is finished baking, we can set this aside to cool because we do not want to add our frosting until the cake is cooled completely, otherwise it will melt it. However, as it cools, we can go ahead and start preparing our icing. When I initially developed this recipe, my first thought was we were going to be doing a ganache topping instead. I have a ganache recipe, you can use that if you want, but I am so happy I switched gears and went with a cream cheese based frosting instead. Everyone who has tried this recipe has loved the cake, but they've really raved about the icing too. It just really complicated the flavor of the cake so nicely, so definitely try it. It's also not too sweet, which I love. Now we're going to be adding to a mixing bowl, eight ounces of softened cream cheese, if I can get it open, and one half cup of unsalted butter, or if you want to use salted butter, just omit the pinch of salt that I'll be adding in a bit. And we're going to use an electric mixer to cream together the butter and cream cheese. Once that's nicely combined, we'll start to gradually add our powdered sugar. I have two and a half cups of powdered sugar here. I'll try to add this a bit slowly so we don't send powdered sugar flying all over everything. Once that sugar's combined, we are going to add one third cup of natural cocoa powder. Stir this in. Now for flavor, the last thing we're going to add is 3 fourths teaspoon of vanilla extract and just a pinch of salt, like I mentioned earlier. This is an eighth teaspoon. And evidently I got some moisture in when I poured it out because it's sticking. It's fine. Mix this in. I'm just going to quickly scrape the sides and bottom of the bowl, make sure everything is well incorporated because look at that. There's some cream cheese hiding on the bottom. Mandatory taste test. It's perfect, gotta wash my hands. And once our cake has cooled, we can go ahead and spread the frosting over top. Don't add to this too soon. As I mentioned, the frosting will melt. The cake may tear if you try to add the frosting while it's too warm. This is such a chocolatey, silky, incredible frosting. It's not as sweet as my classic cream cheese frosting because it doesn't need to be, doesn't need to be as stiff. We're not piping it, we're just spreading it on top. And I always just serve this cake directly in the pan it's baked in. It makes it easy for transporting. There's no need to turn it out onto a cake platter unless you are feeling really ambitious. Okay, last thing I like to add, take a couple of mini chocolate chips and just scatter them over the surface. Adds that nice extra pop of chocolate flavor. So good. All right, now it's time to dig in. Let's see how this looks. <laughs> Don't pay attention to my cuts. I did not divide this well at all. Oh yeah, this looks good. It smells amazing. I am so excited for you to try this one at home. If you try it, please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I always love hearing from you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. This is amazing. I think it's seriously amazing. Mm.